Well, y'all, look what finally got here from AliExpress. The compression fittings that should work on a stock Mark 8 hot end. Which, this is a stock Mark 8 hot end. Now this one over here had its threads modified so that I could use M10 threaded compression fittings. Because that's what I thought most everyone was using. But it turns out that M10 and 1 8 inch British pipe spec are so incredibly similar that they're often swapped out one for each other just because. Now the difference between the two is actually quite interesting. M10 is a type of thread that is not tapered, meaning these threads are straight all the way down. But that's not how these heat sinks are coming to people. They're actually tapered. And that's what British pipe spec threads are. These are slightly tapered, just ever so slightly. And that fits in a standard Mark 8 hot end with zero modification of the hot end from the user. So I sincerely need to thank one of my viewers for pointing this out. Now, if you've never seen how a compression fitting works, it's very simple. We're going to demonstrate how this is going to work on a Mark 8 hot end. First, we take our Bowden tube, and I've only ever worked with this kind of setup with a Capricorn Bowden tube for consistency's sake. And we use a single brass ferrule. Double ferrule systems, I have no idea if they'll work. I've never tried them. Single ferrule seems to work just fine. Now we do still have this one problem where uh, because these are meant for, well, water lines and such, you have to drill out the center because there's a little stop right there. Well, once you drill out the center, you should be able to poke this all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. All right, I went upstairs and got my drill and drilled out the center bore here. And now... The Bowden tube slides through. Now you could drill it out a little bit more than I did. So this is a kind of tight fit, but it'll demonstrate the process all the same. I'm going to go ahead and put that through there. I'm going to tighten up the connection on a Mark 8 hot end. We're going to push this through. Now here's where you would have your heat break and your heat block and your nozzle. And you would do your standard procedure for tightening down the nozzle onto the Bowden tube on this Bowden specific setup, non all metal hot end. And to lock everything in place is like any of the other single ferrule systems that we've demonstrated over the past few months. You just put the ferrule on top, take the compression nut, and you get it about hand, hand tight like that. And now, it's, it's tight enough that this shouldn't be moving around. Now, it's interesting, this one actually is moving a little bit, which means we could probably tighten that ferrule just a little bit more. So we're going to try that. We want it to hold everything nice and securely. And actually, it's funny, our standard Ender 3 toolkit connects, uh, works with this nut perfectly, and now, holy crikey, yeah, that, that ain't moving. Now, the common thing people say is, well, you've just compressed something around the Bowden tube, isn't that going to restrict the filament from moving through? And I can tell you, with experience, using this style compression fitting on my Microswiss hot ends, with well over five to six hundred hours of actual print time, that no, you don't have any problems moving filament through this. In fact, let me go get some filament right now. Because I know I'll never hear the end of it if I don't demonstrate, and uh, I didn't use a, <laughs> I didn't use a bone tube cutter, or a, you know, soft tube cutter. I just used my knife, so it's a little crimped right there. So we'll come in from the bottom where it's nice and clean, right? We're going to pass this filament, 1.75 millimeter, through 
everything here. And of course, I've got this cheap old brittle filament that snaps on me, but it'll do all the same. All right. We are now pass through. Look at that. Nothing. No problems. It doesn't bind. It's not going to affect your Bowden tube where it causes a crimp in the tube. You have a brass fitting that is simply changing its shape to the outer diameter of the tube. It doesn't change the shape of the inner diameter of the tube, at least not in my experience. And like we were just saying before, you know, uh, there's not as much to grip on here, but eh, it's, well, I mean, it's PTFE, man. It's super slippery, slippery. So this thing's freaking on there, man. So again, compression fittings. They work really freaking well. And now I've sourced some that'll work on a standard Mark 8 hot end. Any hot end that uses the same type of coupler as a standard Mark 8 hot end should work with this compression fitting. All right, I've devised a little test here. It's not going to be super scientific, but it should be representative of why I like these couplers here. So we're going to take a fresh ferrule a fresh coupler and we're going to pit them against each other so let's get this one tightened down to spec I'm gonna give it the good snug sure that ferrule is on there and to show that this isn't binding from being tight Oh, no issues going forward. That's on there pretty good. Now this is a fresh coupler from TH3D, or one of the ones that I got from them that I didn't get around to using. And we're just going to stick this in through here. Now to demonstrate that this also is not problematic, I'm going to shove some filament through, and as you can see, we don't bind anywhere. That filament would have gone all the way up here. Cool. All right. In fact, let's get these. Let's get these a little closer here. Yeah. So we've demonstrated that both of these they hold on to the Bowden tube. Both of them allow filament to slip through without any problem. But which one is going to hold on to the Bowden tube better? Well, we can already tell in terms of forward and backward, the pneumatic coupler, the little press fit one, is having some issues because the more you press it down, because the little collet right here can move. But let's just friggin' pull, man, see what happens. Oh, we're getting some release. Who's going to give up first? Oh, we got, we got, we're pulling out of here, bud. Oh, that dropped a few things. We can actually see you made a clean slice down this Bowden tube. Interesting. You would think that that would automatically make this the worst product. But aha, it's not. And we're going to get into why. Because we're going to talk about the internal bits and pieces about these things. So let's talk about that ferrule. This is the little ferrule. And it held on pretty admirably, I'd say. So we were really giving it the beans. Went from refried all the way down to pinto. And as you can see, the brass ferrule is now incapable of going back on. These ferrules, when you tighten them down real hard, they're one-time use. But let's talk about this. Because outright pull force is not the issue with these. What is the issue is going back and forth, back and forth, all those retractions, can you see the Bowden tube slipping back and forth? 
that's a problem. Because when you're using the Bowden tube to butt up against the nozzle, this thing is just going to wear those teeth more and more and more until eventually those teeth break. The ferrule, however, does not care about which direction it's being pulled or pushed on. It held on pretty freaking good, I'd say. And although this one right now outright beat it in terms of just gripping on there, let's see what happened to the Bowden tube. Uh, so the pneumatic function, the press fit function, is now failing. You can't get it to release. Those teeth are now super stuck in this Bowden tube. So let's try and get this off. See what the heck happened here. Oh man, this stuff's slippery. Okay. Look at that. That's pretty hardcore fraying on the Bowden tube versus what we have over here. Hmm, interesting results, isn't it? The difference is this is now structurally compromised, where this entire component is basically toast. Those teeth are going to wear out more and more and more each time you tug back and forth. This doesn't really wear like that. When you tug it back and forth, it stays locked in position. It doesn't have those teeth that are reliant on this little push button release for its gripping force. So it's, it's kind of hard to demonstrate because outright grip is not the problem. It's the wearing away of the Bowden tube that eventually causes the outer diameter to suffer and then eventually wear like this to the point where it can't grip anymore because the outer diameter has changed and gotten smaller versus something that grips on there and doesn't wear from being pushed and pulled with the average forces that are seen with a 3D printer. So the issues when we compare these two are not obvious right away, but they are definitely obvious over time. And that's what I've found over time. How much do you want to do maintenance? How often do you want to replace one of these and have a failed print? You don't need outright strength. You just need reliable and consistent strength in both directions. I still stand by that this is better than this. We just look at how it wears the Bowden tube and you can see which one does more damage 